guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ophidian Arena by Hack and Slash Games. It plays two to four players, takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up or so. And in the game Ophidian Arena, you're basically going to be playing as gladiators, and you're attempting to defeat your opponent's gladiators. Now, of course, you can play with multiple players or a one-on-one -on -one head to head fight, but the main objective is to gain either cheer or victory points. If you can get victory points all the way up you'll win if you can get all the cheer all the way up you can win as well and cheer can be utilized for other things now of course the crowd's going to be working in your favor for the most part if you're doing the right things and so when you attack certain gladiators do certain things you're going to gain cheer you can use it to help yourself out in some way and of course if you get up to the very highest point basically the crowd's going to come out and destroy the gladi enemy gladiator team because they're so happy that you're doing so well that victory points is pretty easy if you destroy certain enemy gladiators you're going to get victory points based on the ones that you defeat and and if you can get to that Covenant 12 spot, you're going to win. There's a plethora of different types of decks that you're going to get in Ophidian Arena. I think there's three different sets as the retail version. It's also going to come with additional like cards as well as some replacement cards. It's going to come with die, to tokens that you can be able to utilize on certain things like a resource track or your victory track or your cheer. So you're going to have everything you need to play up to four players in the game Ophidian Arena. Uh, it used to be, well, I guess technically it still is, Ophidian 2360, but with this arena you get pretty much everything you're going to be seeing here i'm going to go into detail as to how you can play the game how rounds work how victory conditions are set and then your basic idea of deck building now they all of course always come with starter decks but in this sense there's going to be a lot of cards that you can go ahead and make your own ophidian deck if you so choose let's go ahead and take it down below i'll show you what you get and basically how to play the game so here we have ophidian arena and everything included in the game and as you can tell there is quite a a lot that is included with this one specifically. You're going to be getting the three uh, starter decks, the Survival of the Fittest, uh, it says War Machine deck. You're gonna get the Art of War. You're gonna get Mental Block. You're going to get the Warriors Resolve, Biohazard, and you're gonna get Other World Allies deck. So quite a lot. Basically there's six different standard 45 card decks with the extra seven or eight gladiators and their level up cards along with some player references and uh, other little things included. Uh, each box can play two players and gives you enough to do everything you need for two players but this plays two to four so if you have two boxes you can play four players and with every additional box and or some other additional stacks of cards you can kind of make your own deck and create your own gladiator theme style deck along with the specific gladiators you choose for your specific theme. Right here I have basically every Thing for just one of the sets and I have each of the decks set aside so this is just literally one of the boxes in the Ophidian Arena set here you're going to be getting all of these tokens uh, that are basically going to be used for your victory points over here, the 0 to 12, the cheer from 0 to 15, your resources from 0 to 19, as well as you'll be getting tokens that are called rage tokens. So your gladiators will eventually take a certain amount of damage, and when they do, you're going to put rage on them, and they're going to be able to do certain things, like if they get attacked, they can turn over, as well as they can do damage back to the opponent if they're already turned over. Very, very useful. And you can get mini die. Mini dice, the cutest little dice ever, which you can use for taking damage on your gladiators. You'll place these little die on them, and you're never going to need more than probably about six or seven of them at any time, because most, well, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but realistically, this is more than enough for what we've been playing. And uh, you're also going to be uh, able to purchase these mats here. These were given to me a while ago when I did Ophidian Arena, uh, the uh, the original one, which is the uh, Ophidian 2360. Uh, I got the mats here, so these are very, very nice and very, very useful as for how the game works, but it's not needed. They come with these little t these little cards here, the resource tractor tracker and the cheer tracker, as well as the victory point tracker as well. So you'll have enough for all four players, even regardless if you don't have the mats for the specific game. Um, and that's pretty much what you're going to get. Additionally, there is going to be a ton of additional promo cards. There's going to be some patched cards, or basically cards that are going to replace certain cards from other of the decks to make them a little bit more 
fair, or maybe there's some misprints or whatever. It just really depends on what specific the cards were doing and whatnot. So there's just basically some, some patching, as well as additional gladiators. So you'll be able to construct your own decks with uh, whatever type of gladiators you want. It's going to give you a lot of replayability now. Okay, so now that you know about everything that's going to be included, let's talk about the setup. Oh, so we've got a rule book and, of course, the main box there. But the setup is pretty simple. You're going to get four gladiators, or up to ten points. And depending on if your gladiators have certain things like, uh, for instance, let's see if I can go ahead and find one right now, uh, patronage discounts, then you'll be able to add extra points on. So as you can see, this is a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. With a patronage 1, that gives you an extra point to spend as long as the heroes are all level 1. But in general, it's just gladiators equal the number of, ten, uh, number of points of 10. And of course, if you only had two gladiators and they were both at 5, that just means that you have really strong gladiators. It's going to be really difficult to kill them. Place all the rest of your gladiators that are not level 1 over in your little gladiator stack, which will be over here. Uh, and usually they're going to be the 3s uh, and 4s uh, levels, so you can go ahead and put those there. Everybody's going to start at a 0 victory point and a 0 cheer point on the track, as well as starting with... 10 plus the round number of resources. So the first round will be 11. Now this specific character here says during setup he's going to get a hand max of plus 1 and he gets an additional 2 starting resources. So he gets 13, whereas I would only get 11. And then after you've done that, place all your gladiators in the front position, which is called the action field. Nothing goes in the supply field just yet. Shuffle your decks of cards, which is your gladiator decks, and then you're going to draw out 7 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. After you've drawn your seven, you're going to go ahead and draw two more, and then you're going to go ahead and select two cards to put on the bottom. Now, this character actually gets plus one to his hand size, so he's going to get eight plus two. He's then going to go ahead and look at his hand, determine what cards he does not want, what cards he does want, and then selecting two and putting them down on the bottom of the deck, which will hopefully be used later in the game. This is going to be your hand size for the game, and the same will happen for both players. Three, four, five, six, seven, plus two. Choosing the two cards from your hand. Of course, you probably want to look at them when you choose them. Placing them on the bottom of the deck, and now you've got your hand size. Choose a player to gain momentum you can do this randomly by rolling die however you'd like to do it and then after you've decided who has momentum that's the player who is going to get to go first have that player begin the game and of course i'm going to show you how that works down below right now explaining uh, basically a turn by turn turn order of playing ophidian as well as how the game ends and all that other little good stuff before we come up and talk about my review so here we have ophidian and it's all set up and we're playing with the specific deck of uh the survival of the fittest war machine deck versus biohazards biohazards are greens and the war machines are the warriors which are red if you want to learn more about the different types actually on this board and on the back of the boxes and whatnot it shows you all the different types mystic scion summoner tech so on and so forth and then of course over here it shows you the different responses positive negative variable and then of course a response action that you can be taking on your turn as well as some additional information regarding the types of symbols that you're going to see on the cards very very useful over here it tells you the steps of the breather which is at the end of the round this is what happens before the next wave begins there's four total waves in the game and after the fourth wave if nobody has completed the victory conditions which are either you get to 15 cheer or 12 victory points then the player with the most victory points is the winner we've got the rage token set aside as well as the die that will be used for damage and everybody's gonna have their victory points and cheer at zero and of course their resources set to 11 which is 10 plus the round number and of course this specific character here says that he gets plus two so it goes from 11 to 13 and he gets an additional hand size limit of plus one so he's got his eight cards and he's got his seven cards well we're gonna go ahead and roll the die and we roll the die and it just so happens that this player wins he rolled a five and this player rolled up he rolled snake eyes so unfortunately for this player here he's going to go second which means that this player has momentum and momentum is very important in this game you can basically play as long as you're playing positive actions and or responses as long as you want on your turn until you play a negative action or choose to pass there are a lot of different positive actions such as cards for instance if you look on the right hand side the top right hand side of the cards it'll show you either a negative a positive right here uh, there's also response which are R's, and then there's variables which have question marks on them, so they could be minuses or pluses depending on the specific type of card. So whenever you play a positive action, you can keep going on your turn until eventually you play a negative in which the momentum will pass. 
Attacking is additionally a free action. You can choose to use one of your units to attack an adjacent opponent's units in this area here. And you can do that for all of your units. You could also choose to advance. So if you have a character back here and you want to move it up here, that is a free positive action. However, negative action is to retreat. So if you want to go from here to here, it will make you turn and set and then move backwards in the ranks. It protects you from being attacked, but it also basically freezes the character from doing certain things on their specific uh, wave. Um, uh, variable actions will say on the card specifically what they do in reactions generally are kind of like instants that happen when something unique happens. Uh, and like I said before, if you cannot play a negative action or you don't want to, you simply will pass. And if both players pass, that's going to end the wave and begin the steps of the breather, moving on to the second, third, and finally the fourth round of the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. This player here has his 13 income or resources. He's got his hand of cards and his characters. He wants to go ahead and play some stuff. So let's go ahead and play a pump. This one here says he needs to have uh, a specific cost. Uh, there's a specific cost to each card, which is going to associate to the, the gladiators, which we'll show you in the top right hand corner. In order to play this card, he has to have that one white symbol on one of the gladiators, and he does a one for a one, which will allow him to play this. And then uh, it's going to cost a certain amount. Of, uh, of resources, which says one up here. Then it says plays only on a, a constru construct or uh, or this specific type of gladiator. So you can only play it on these two types of gladiators. And it says plus one of your maximum hand size. So I can go ahead and play this on this guy here. And now he's got a plus one to his maximum hand size. So it now is up to eight again for, for the rest of the game, whereas this only gives you eight for the first specific wave. Not so shabby, pretty useful, but this does have a recur reoccurring cost uh, during the steps of the breather. So you have to pay this cost again, which I'll explain a little bit later uh, through when this phase begins. Okay, so that was a positive action, so he can keep going. This is a negative and another negative. Uh, this one here is a reaction, which says target attacking gladiator gets plus one attack or uh, plus two attack if it is the symbol of a gladiator and uh, players and receives two damage which cannot be prevented or reduced so basically it gives him additional damage but it will also cost him health so this specifically will not work until you choose to attack and then utilize the card another negative another reaction and another negative so this player if he wants go ahead and play another negative let's go ahead and play a minion this is a minion and it's going to cost zero. It is a uh, Clithar and it says zero and uh, you're going to go ahead and just put him down on the field. And when you do that, that's a negative action and you will lose momentum. There's a cost associated as well during the breather and that's zero. So he'll just simply stay out and then it tells you he's got a reaction. When you use a gladiator's negative ability, uh, you can spend one cheer and that ability is considered a positive. So negative abilities like this one are now considered positive provided you have a cheer to spend. And when you do that, basically you can keep your momentum. It's very, very useful. If you want to look at all of the cards here, you're going to notice specific types of uh, stats at the very bottom. Uh, you're going to have two that are not here right now, which is going to be a shield. And uh, the other one is, I can't remember what the other one is, but this one here is going to be HP. This is its rage value. So when it takes this much damage, it gets, gets enraged and one of these tokens will be placed on it. And uh, this one over here is how much damage he deals. Um, and basically when it attacks, it'll deal that specific type of damage. Now, of course, he played his negative action, so that is going to end his momentum, and the momentum will shift over to this player over here. And this player can go ahead and do the same thing. He can start playing specific cards based on having the specific resources available. So for instance, I can go ahead and play. Let's see if I got something I can play. I can play this one here. It's gonna cost me one warrior, one gladiator with a one symbol of green and then two of zeros. So there's one, one, and one. So this can be played. It will cost four and it's a quick hit. So it says whenever your specific type of gladiator is attacked, they may uh, ignore all damage and or damage from weapon cards. So if I wanted to play this when he was attacking, I could do this thing, but unfortunately it's a reaction. Let's see if I can find anything positive here. Uh, looks like most of the things are not gonna be super helpful. Here's one I can play. Uh, that one, this one's a pump. So it's gonna do one damage against demons and demonics and pumped character takes one, uh, one more damage from demons and demonics as well or minus one damage from demons and demonics. So this protects me from demons. This is a demon over here. It tells you of the top left-hand corner what they specifically are. So this is going to cost me one character with this symbol, which I've got, and then plus two currency. So I'll spend the two resources here and then I can place it on any of my characters here. I'll just go ahead and place it on the pathogenesis here. And now he's got his plus one of demons and his protection from demons. Very, very useful. It's a positive action. Let's go ahead and show you an attack. 
So well, this character is going to want to attack and he can go ahead and attack any of the characters in the front row. These can all hit the front row and they can also hit the back row. If you hit a character in the front row, so I want to choose this one to attack this one, the damage can go through. So this is two damage to this character here at 10 health. And if he just simply takes it, he'll lose two health and place a little die marker there which shows that he's taken the two damage. However, he may not want to take the damage. In fact, he might want to have this character do so. If he does so, he can go ahead and turn this guy over and set it and take the damage with this guy instead. When this character attacks, it is set. So every time a character attacks, it is considered a positive action and it gets set, which means it cannot set again until the next wave. And uh, the player who gets taken, who takes damage, so if this one took the two damage, this player here that did the damage is going to gain a cheer. If this player here blocks with a separate gladiator, that is a successful move. He came in and went, yeah, and blocked the damage, in which case he instead would get the cheer. So if you choose to do that, you'll gain cheer, but at the cost of having to set the character that you are choosing to defend the other character with. So that can be of some benefit. I always make sure to look at your cards here, make sure they have some kind of, maybe they have some specific benefit. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they have reactions and whatnot. So that was my attack and it was dealt straight through. There's no damage that affects you you uh, in reaction unless the card says otherwise or if the character has been enraged. So for instance, now that, now that you understand that, if this character were to attack this one instead, uh, these characters can also choose to uh, block. So if I wanted to do two damage to this guy here, that would actually kill because it only has one health. But these characters can block, but when they do, that does not generate cheer because these guys are basically their protectors anyway, and that does not impress the crowd all that much. But if he chooses to remove this guy, then you can gain cheer. You're going to be gaining cheer when you attack with your gladiators to other gladiators. Minions that attack do not generate cheer. The crowd only cares about gladiators. So we'll just go ahead and set it aside just like that anyway. He chose to attack him and he chose to block. And maybe he goes ahead and wants to play a negative action. And maybe one of his negative actions he's going to play is maybe he wants to protect uh, this guy here. He can actually go ahead and bring it backwards. And that is going to retreat it. And it's going to also set it. And it's also going to be a negative action which means he's lost his momentum and now it's once again the next player's turn and this player is going to go ahead and look at his hand of cards choose cards that he can go ahead and play so maybe he wants to play something like oh let's see oh well i can choose to move this guy up if i wanted as a positive action i can choose to attack so i'll go ahead and attack with this guy which is x x is two or when you're attacking a specific type of uh champion it will actually do three damage instead so we'll go ahead and attack this guy for three damage this guy can go ahead and choose to block it thusly taking the three and also uh because i chose to block i'm gonna gain the cheer Cheer is interesting. Cheer is basically one way to win the game. If it gets all the way up to here, you're going to win. Or if the victory points get to 12, you win. Now, utilizing cheer is interesting. First of all, if you have more cheer than your opponent, you're considered the fan favorite. And there's a little thumb up symbol on some of the cards that will give you specific abilities for being the fan favorite. Additionally, you can spend cheer on cards. They'll tell you how to spend cheer. Like this one specifically says you can spend a cheer. Uh, but otherwise, if you spend a cheer and a player plays a positive action, that will actually turn into a negative action for them and you will now gain momentum. So it's very, very useful. But of course, when you spend it, it you're going to not be able to get to 15 as fast. So it's kind of up to you how you want to choose to spend the cheer. And uh, remember, there's certain rules as to how cheer is generated. But um, that is one way of gathering your cheer. And basically it's just gonna continue going back and forth. Eventually this player will have no cards that he or she wants to play, or maybe all of their resources has run out. And when both players choose to pass in succession, then the next round is going to begin after the steps of the breather. And the steps of the breather is pretty, pretty interesting. So the first thing that happens, you're gonna determine momentum. And momentum is who gets to go first. And that's gonna be based on whoever takes the most damage. And in this case, this player has three damage and this player only has two. So he would gain momentum. Damage is calculated based on your board state as well as whatever is in your funeral pyre. Whenever a character such as a gladiator dies and has a victory point total, it's going to go down here in this funeral pile, and the player who destroyed that gladiator is going to get victory points, and it'll tell you on the card how much you get. Those That damage that is assigned to this guy in, in here will count towards your momentum, so that would be six damage if he was in here, plus maybe this one had, had two, that would be a total of eight. So funeral pyre is going to count towards momentum, just in case you were wondering. Um, after you've determined your momentum based on the damage you've taken, you're going to move on to the generate which means you're going to unset all of your characters and you're also going to be able to discard your hand down to however much you'd like so maybe you don't like these cards you can choose to discard a certain amount of them you're going to then go ahead and drop to your maximum hand size you're then going to draw plus two you're going to select two cards you don't like and place them on the bottom of your deck 
after you've placed them on the bottom of your deck, you've got your regenerate phase complete. Everybody has a new hand of cards. Then you're going to move on to the maintain. And the maintain's interesting. Basically, you're going to be paying for all of the cards that have a maintenance cost. And that's gonna be the bottom left-hand corner. In this case, this guy's gonna to have to pay one. And you're going to gain resources based on the round. So in this case, it'd be the next wave. So that would be wave two, which means you get 10 plus two, so that's 12. And both players would get that unless cards said otherwise. And you would pay the maintenance cost, so that's gonna cost him one. So he'd go down to 11. And this player here, he's got a uh, maintenance card that actually has a, an X on it, which means that this card just simply is going to go away. So it only lasts for an entire wave. And after everybody's paid for that, you'd move on to the promotion step. Promotion step's really cool. Basically what happens is you're gonna select gladiators, two gladiators of your choice, and you're going to promote them with your gladiator stack. So for instance here, this is a legion, he's a level one. If you wanted to, you can convert him to a level two, and then maybe the hunter, you can convert him to a level two as well. After you've gotten them to level two, uh, if you want, you can, for the next wave, choose from here. So for instance, this guy here, Pandemica, if this was wave three, you can simply take this guy out of level two and put this level three down. So you're gonna be basically converting your gladiators to making them stronger as the waves go on. If any of your gladiators have died, because you're supposed to have four of them, then you can actually go ahead from the three different recruits that are in your uh, gladiator stack, and you can go ahead and bring them out. They're usually level zeros, and you're going to be placing them out. So if this guy had, for some reason, hit the funeral pyre, pyre you can uh, level these two up and then place one of these guys out, giving you an additional gladiator for placement, which is very, very nice. After all the players have went ahead and promoted their characters, and don't forget, when you promote, you're also, like for instance, if I promoted this guy to a level two, so if I didn't if I didn't choose this guy and I instead chose this guy, he had two damage on him, but because you whenever you promote a character, you're going to actually reduce the damage on them by one. So in this case, he'd go from two to one, which is also pretty nice and gives you an option to do that. The last thing you're going to do is maneuver. And maneuvering is nice. Uh, in this instance, you know how you normally have to retreat, and when you do that, you're gonna have to turn to the side. In this case, you can just go ahead and choose uh, which orientation and where you want your characters to be. Basically, it's going to be free actions to do so, it won't cost anything, and that's gonna be set up for the next round. After that, you're gonna once again begin with the next wave. The person who had momentum from this step here is going to start, and you're gonna keep going back and forth until eventually the fourth round hits. And when that happens, you're gonna tally up the victory points. So based on the damage that has been dealt to these characters, placing them here, gaining the specific victory points, that will determine the winner. Of course, you can win earlier if at any point you get to 12 or you get to 15 cheer. And that's the basic idea for Ophidian Arena or even just Ophidian 2360 with all the different things included. Anyway, that's just a basic idea of just one of the decks here. There's multiples to talk about. So we're going to come up. I'm going to explain some of the different cards. I'm going to explain what you're going to get exactly and how you can utilize deck building strategy. And then I'll give you my review. Okay, so let's talk about Aphidian Arena and basically all the things you're going to get. I'm going to try and just give you a brief example of what's cool about this. So first of all, uh, oh, and a couple caveats. First of all, on the far left, what you didn't see before is shields. Basically means you can protect yourself from taking damage. If this character here has one shield and he would take two damage, he would instead take one. And on the far right is defensive damage, which is this green one right here, which means if the specific character gets attacked, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this name, but he'll be able to attack based on this green number number here. Not a lot of characters have it, but the ones that do, very, very powerful, very, very useful to have shields and counterattack damage. Speaking of counterattack damage, I want to explain rage a little more. If your character gets enraged, so for instance, it has 10 health and it has an enrage meter of five, when it takes five damage, it gets a little token on it, and that means it's enraged, which means whenever a player attacks it, it will actually get to attack back for a damage. And additionally, if it is turned to the side or set and it gets attacked, instead of doing damage back, it will actually turn and unset itself, allowing it to use an action again, uh, which basically means attack. And that's very, very powerful. So enraged units are very good, but a lot of them that are really good usually require quite a bit of damage before they actually become good. Some of them, however, start off enraged, which is also pretty cool. All the decks that you get, which are uh, stuff like this one here, the War Machine and the Biohazard, which I, we, we basically uh, showed you, uh, have specific ways in which the decks function with the gladiators. So the gladiators are basically your core units and they're really going to uh, systematically set up 
the cards you're gonna be drawing and how you're gonna be playing them, which guys you choose to promote are going to allow you to affect other cards from the deck and how you choose to play them. If you promote certain ones and don't promote others, you might not be able to use certain cards in the deck and that might be based on your opponent. So, okay, this player here is not using the humans. So maybe I'm not gonna upgrade this guy who's very strong against humans, or maybe I'm gonna upgrade this specific guy. One of my favorites is actually this one here, which is called Pathogenesis. It allows you to use it as a negative action, turn it to the side, and then you can search your deck for a bio decay card that costs two or less and play it for free. When you upgrade her a bunch, she'll be able to then choose to do a three or even a four cost card from your deck. So basically being able to pull cards out of your deck and just play them, which reminds me of Sisse from Magic. Super, super cool. And then of course the War Machines, they're just simply straight up attackers and they got tons of things that they equip with. They've got massive AOE damage, things that you are not exactly ready for when they occur. Yeah, just, just each deck functions differently and how you utilize your specific gladiators is going to also correlate to how you want to play cards from your hand. You can also make your own deck. You're going to choose your gladiators, you're going to get a 45 card deck and you'll get your seven or eight or nine card. You get three recruits and then you get your three or four gladiators based on the point system and then they may or may not have additional upgrade cards that can go up to level four. I like the cards that go up to level four because they get really really strong but of course you have to wait to upgrade them so they're not super strong until the last wave but the last wave is the last wave and that's going to end the game so uh you have to basically construct your deck as to how you want to based on your gladiators and it makes a huge difference i like the fact that you're also able to draw cards into your hand seven draw two more and then select two that you don't want put them on the bottom of the deck remember if your deck runs out as well and you're empty you're basically going to be forfeit and not only that but you can play up to four players and it functions just the same way with a couple little small caveats as to how that functions but it basically just goes around up to the point where everybody passes and the next wave begins rinse and and repeat you can choose which gladiators you want to hit you can also play a team variant there's quite a few variants in this game and uh let's get into now the review i suppose because i want to talk about multiplayer well basically with multiplayer i like the fact that you're playing the free-for-all style and you can choose when you want to team up when you don't want to team up as well as the fact that you can just play teams and you can make decks based on things that help uh, your, uh, your your friends and hinder your opponents. So if you're both playing a specific thing, you can kind of be like, oh, this character here, and you can play your boosts and whatnot on other players' things, because as long as they're allowed to function, you can do that, which uh, there's some power-ups that actually give you a, bo a, bo a boon and uh, somebody else a negative, or maybe you and your, your teammate a boon and then the other player's a negative. It just really depends on how you choose to set up your deck. They included a ton of extra cards in this, and from what I hear, they're going to include even more cards as far as promos go, as far as additional champions, champions and whatnot, which gives deck construction a whole new meaning. I got to go ahead and set up a deck along with Grant. We made up our own little decks and it was it was a little challenging to, to figure out which cards I want to put in how and, and whatnot because this game has the complexity as of maybe I would say magic as far as where you want to play and how you want to play and whatnot. Probably not as, as difficult to understand as far as there not being a stacking system, but there's quite a lot. There's a, this, this game packs a punch. The artwork is solid. I really, really like all the artwork in this game. It has has quality images, it's very, very vi vibrant and beautiful. I'm a big fan of the mat, and I almost think it's it's something I would definitely prefer playing on over the, the little card things. So if you're gonna pick up Ophidian Arena, I would just, I would get the mats if they were available. I would I would pick them up just because it makes everything a lot easier and the mats are also really, really nice. Minus their, I don't know, I don't the website on there. I just, I'd rather not have that on there, but it, it's good marketing, I guess, whatever. Um, and the fact that you have three different decks to play with. So you can have four players play with each of the constructed decks. They're give, they give you cards, uh, which are over there, but they give you cards that you can go ahead and set up decks for beginners so you can learn the game and makes it progressively more and more, like you can get into it a little easier. This is not a booster pack type, type of game. You just get everything and then you just construct how you want to. And if you really wanted to, you could have, you, you could buy one, your friend could buy one, and you guys could just make the best possible deck you, you can make and it'll function as as you want it to. Um, there is, like I said, the, the, the negatives I would say would probably be, it is a bit complex and the rules, I actually preferred watching the how to play video online that they made. I think that's good. Maybe you guys would like this one. Hopefully you do. But the rules were a little bit dicey. I mean, there's just a few little things on there. I, I, I guess I'm nitpicking. Um, and being able to deck construct you, you have to really play the game a few times with your introductory deck and then with the ones they provide with you before I would suggest even going into that because that does pack a bit of a punch. So this game is for medium to heavyweight uh, TCG slash LCG style card game players. If you play Android Netrunner, you'll be fine with this one. 
Um, overall, I really, really like this game. Ophidian has great artwork, has a great flow to it, and as long as you don't mind the construction portion of it afterward, that's great, but of course you don't have to, so it's really up to you. I would suggest taking a look at this game down below if you're interested. For people who like TCG LCG games, this one is not a bad option. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at the game Ophidian Arena, the entire box set. Realistically, if you dig the just the base, if you just have one of them, it's really worth picking up to get all the things, especially if you like deck construction. And there's three ways to win with possibly more combinations, but it's really cool when you, you transition from the two player to the four player. It's it's quite a quite a difference. Anyway, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, on the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST, we do a live stream in this one. We're gonna be doing a live stream for this one as well in a couple weeks from now. So if you wanna learn even more about it before deciding on your purchasing decision, you can go ahead and come on to our live stream, 7.30 p.m. PST, every Wednesday, about two or three weeks from now. We're gonna have a Ophidian Arena and we'll show you a four player style game. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to defeating you in the arena next time.